A cylindrical drill with a radius of 5 centimeters is used to bore a hole through the center of a sphere with a radius of 7 centimeters. We want to find the volume of the ring-shaped solid that remains. Let's first look at this graphically. If we graph the sphere where the center is at the origin, it would be graphed here in blue. Again, the sphere has a radius of 7 centimeters. If we drill through the center with a drill bit that has a radius of 5 centimeters, we would remove the volume inside the red cylinder that has a radius of 5 centimeters. I also graph the xy plane in yellow because remember, if we set up a double integral and the function f of x comma y is non-negative over the area in the xy plane, it would give us the volume divided by the surface in the xy plane. So now if we look down on the xy plane, notice how if we integrated f of x comma y, which gave us the non-negative part of the sphere over this region between a circle with a radius of five centimeters from the drill bit and a circle and a circle with a radius of seven centimeters from the sphere, we can determine the volume above the xy plane. Then if we multiply this by two because of the symmetry, we can find all the volume that would be left after drilling through the sphere with a drill bit with a radius of five centimeters. So going back to our work, the equation of a sphere with a radius of seven centimeters centered at the origin would be x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to seven squared or 49. So if we solve this for z, we can determine f of x comma y, which we can then convert to a polar function in the form f of r comma theta. So solving for z squared first, we'd have z squared equals 49 minus x squared minus y squared. And now we would take the square root of both sides of the equation, which would give us z equals plus or minus the square root of, I'm gonna write this as 49 and then instead of minus x squared minus y squared, I'm going to write minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. Notice how here z is both positive and negative, but because we want the part that's only non-negative, we're going to let f of x comma y be equal to the positive square root of 49 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. So now we need to find our function f of r comma theta. Well, f of r comma theta would be equal to the square root of 49 minus r squared, because remember, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now let's work on setting up our double integral in polar form to find the volume. The volume above the xy plane would be equal to the double integral of f of r comma theta, which we now know is a square root of 49 minus r squared. And remember for polar form, we have r dr d theta. And now we need to find the limits of integration for r and theta that would trace out this area in the xy plane. We'll notice r starts at five and goes out to seven, which give us the limits of integration for r we integrate with respect to r from five to seven. And then to trace out this area, we need to rotate one full revolution, which means we integrate with respect to theta from zero all the way around to two pi radians. Now this only gives us the volume above the xy plane, so we have to multiply by two in order to get the total volume that remains after drilling to the sphere with the drill bit with a radius of five centimeters. So don't forget, we do have to multiply by two to get the total volume. Without the two, we only get the volume above the xy plane. Now let's go and evaluate this on the next slide. Notice how to find the antiderivative with respect to r, we'll have to perform u substitution. We'll have u equals 49 minus r squared, so differential u is equal to negative two r dr. Because we have rdr here, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative two. So we know that negative one half differential u is equal to r dr. Now to help us find the antiderivative, let's write all of this in terms of u. So we'd have u to the one half for the square root of 49 minus r squared. 
And then for our dr, we have negative one-half differential u. So notice how to find the antiderivative with respect to u, we'd have negative one-half times u to the three-halves divided by three-halves, or times two-thirds. Which means, with respect to r, we would have negative one-half times not u to the three-halves, but 49 minus r squared to the three-halves. Instead of dividing by three-halves, let's multiply by two-thirds. Notice how this simplifies here. So we have negative one-third. We have a two here. So let's go ahead and write this as negative two-thirds times the integral from zero to two pi. And then we just have the quantity, 49 minus r squared to the three halves, which we need to evaluate at seven, then five, and then find the difference. So we'd have negative two-thirds times the integral from zero to two pi of, notice when r is seven, we have the quantity 49 minus seven squared to the three halves minus, when r is five, we have 49 minus five squared to the three halves. So simplifying, we have negative two thirds times the integral from zero to two pi of, well here we're going to have 49 minus 49 to the three halves, that's zero. And then we have minus, this would be 49 minus 25, that's 24 to the three halves. So because of the minus, we have negative 24 raised to the power of three halves. But a negative times a negative is positive. Positive two thirds times positive, square root 24 to the three halves times the integral from zero to two pi of d theta or one d theta if we want. So we have two thirds times 24 to the three halves times the antiderivative of one with respect to theta would be theta. So finally we have two thirds times 24 to the three halves times we'd have two pi minus zero, which we can write as four pi divided by three times 24 to the three halves. Now we could simplify 24 to the three halves, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in this form and also get our decimal approximation for the volume. So we have four pi divided by three, and then times 24 raised to the power of three halves, which would be approximately 492.4991. And because the radius was in centimeters, the volume would be cubic centimeters. So going back to our graph one last time, we just found the volume that would remain if we had this sphere with a radius of seven centimeters and drilled through the center with the drill bit with a radius of five centimeters. So we found the volume of the sphere that is outside the cylinder graphed in red. I hope you found this helpful.